This video is about the elevator problem, a typical problem in the first part of the introductory physics. So you have a person sitting on the scale inside of, of an elevator that is moving with an acceleration downwards. The question is, what is the scale reading? We have two forces acting on the person, so the free body diagram includes two vectors, one upwards for the normal force and one downwards for the gravitational force. Before we get to the actual solution of the problem, it's, actually, it's very important to understand what the scales really measure. Um, while we are used to thinking that the scale will measure our mass, in reality the scale really measures how hard our feet are pressed against the ground or the floor. Or in this case, since the person is sitting on the scale, the scale will read how hard the feet will press against the scale itself. On our diagram, that interaction will show up as the normal force pushing uh, in return back upwards onto the person. Um, so here I'll mark it as Fn. Um, you can say, well, yeah, but how come the scale is reading pounds? Or if you're working with the metric scale, that will be kilograms. Isn't that mass? Um, in reality is that the scales do indeed measure a force. And even though the question could be quite murky if you're working in pounds, since sometimes we use pounds for forces and sometimes we use pounds for mass, in the metric system things are pretty set. Um, you do read the kilograms, which is the unit of mass, so clearly the scale does give us eventually some reading in terms of kilograms or mass. So let's see what that is. I'll call it the parent mass. Uh, what it turns out is that even though the scale reads how hard the feet are pressed against the scale, eventually the reading is given in terms of kilograms by simply scaling down. Take the newtons, divide by g. In this case, g is the gravitational acceleration, 9.8 in magnitude meters per second squared. So typically that will work um, since typically we don't really have an acceleration when we measure our own mass. Um, if you hop on a scale, not in an elevator, usually in your house, the normal force will be equal in magnitude to the gravitational force. Both forces will be canceling out since there'll be no acceleration. And so for the parent mass, after we take the normal force value, which will be equal to the value of the gravitational force mg, and divide by g, we'll see that the parent mass is equal to our actual mass. So this is a clever way for the manufacturers of scales to actually give us what the mass is. Let's see what happens in the elevator, however. If that elevator is moving downwards with an acceleration, that means that the downwards forces must be stronger than the upward forces. In our case, that means that the normal force, or the force with which the scale is pushing against our feet, or that is the reading, will be less than the force with which Earth is pulling us down, or our gravitational force. Newton's second law will give us um, the specifics here. Um, if we write the net force equal to m times the acceleration, in terms of components, we'll see that the situation here is somewhat um, simple. We have all vectors aligned in the vertical direction, so I have written the equation here with the components. The normal force pointing up, I consider that component positive and the acceleration and the gravitational vector pointing down. I consider them having negative components. So here, Newton's second law gives us that the normal force minus the value for the gravitational force, mg, has to be equal to m times minus a. Please note this is a very common mistake to forget the minus here, but look at the vector for the acceleration of the diagram pointing downwards, so that means it has a negative component, vertical component, so that, that is why I had to add that minus. In other words, the normal force will be equal simply to the value mg minus the value of ma. If I factor out m, the expression becomes very simple, m times g minus a. In that case, the parent mass that will be given by the scale will be that value in terms of newtons divided by g, the gravitational acceleration, or we see the expression, the final expression for the apparent mass. Uh, the apparent mass in this case will be equal to the m times the difference between the gravitational acceleration g and a, the acceleration of the actual acceleration of the elevator, everything divided by g. And so you'll end up with units of kilograms if you're working in the metric system, and that is the apparent mass. This is not uh, to say that your mass actual, the actual mass has changed, but simply that now 
the interaction between your feet and scale has changed and it does not reflect what normally will be that pressure. Please note that this expression depends really and only on the acceleration or the direction of the acceleration. Um, you can have the same person sitting on the same scale and the acceleration in both cases to be downwards. And in one case, you can have the elevator moving upwards with a velocity V. So you can see that the elevator will be slowing down. And in the other case, you can have the elevator moving downwards with velocity V or speeding up. In both cases, the normal force will be less than the gravitational force, um, and so our equation for the parent mass stands. In order for us to see a difference, we need an elevator that actually is moving with an acceleration upwards, regardless of its velocity. In that case, the normal force now, the upward forces have to be stronger than the downward forces, and in this case, if we have an acceleration if we have an elevator moving upwards uh, with a velocity v, we will actually have a speeding up situation. Or you can also consider the slowing down situation of an elevator, again, with a person on a scale and acceleration still upward, but the velocity will be downwards. Um, you can repeat the procedure um, for the acceleration upwards, and you'll find out that the apparent mass in this case will actually be equal to the mass times the sum of the gravitational acceleration and the acceleration for the elevator divided by g.